So, welcome to my talk on interesting bird facts. You will see here the common mallard. Um, earlier this year there was a Google Doodle for Mother's Day that featured uh, Mother Duck and her little ducklings. And this made me very frustrated because ducks are terrible mothers. But you can't really blame them for their neglect because the male ducks are rapists. So there are usually more male ducks than female ducks in a population. Um, so the females get to pick which mates they like and they get to be all happy together. But all of the mates that didn't get picked are very angry about this. So they go and rape the, the happily married ducks. And there is an evolutionary arms race going on between male ducks, the drakes, and female ducks. So the male ducks have anti-clockwise corkscrew penises that can be long as their entire body in some species, 20 centimetre long penises, sometimes with spikes to rasp out the other male's semen so that they have more gene pool in the thing. <laughs> and to counter this, the females will have clockwise spiralling, multi-passaged maze-like vaginas with dead ends and sharp turns so that it's almost impossible for a male to rape her and actually get the sperm in the right place. Amazing. Ducks are awful. Chickens, however, are amazing. Right. I would like you to focus on the words at the top. And if you go like this, or if you move your head back and forth, you will notice that you can still, move, see, still read the words. You notice that? Mm -hmm. Now, that is because of something called the vestibulo-ocular reflex that us humans have. And vestibulo is the inner ear, and ocular is the eye. And this means that when your inner ear detects movement, your eye will move to maintain a stationary or motionless visual field. We need this because if we didn't do this, we'd get motion sick just from moving around. Most of the time you're looking at a still image because your eyes adjust. Chickens, their eyes are locked in their heads. They cannot move them. This is like many birds, so their eyes are fixed. So they can't do this. Instead, they have the cervico-ocular reflex, where instead of the eyes compensating for the movement of the neck, the neck compensates for the movement that the chickens see. So you'll see in this, in this wonderful gif that as the chicken's body is moved around, its head remains perfectly still, so that it can still look at the same place. Isn't that wonderful? This is also why the chicken will move around like this. <laughs> because when its head moves back, it's staying in exactly the same place, and then as its head quickly bobs forward, that's when the chicken blinks. So it sees the world in a series of still pictures. And it's, it's, it's where a lot of the ideas for some motion cams and steady cams have come from. Right, next we have, this is a green woodpecker. This can be found in Britain. And you will notice it has an extremely long tongue. It's amazing. Do you know their tongue, or their tongue bone rather, circles all the way around their skull, all the way into their right nostril? And this acts as a kind of seat belt for when they're pecking on wood. Because the force would be so jarring that if it did not have a lot of safety features, their brains would be rattling around in their skulls so they would die. So the woodpecker has cushioning at the front and at the back of its skull. It has the tongue safety net, and the tongue can also be used to go into the holes they peck and scurry out the insects and also they have very little fluid in their skull so that the brain doesn't move around as much but 90 99.7% of all the force that they absorb is absorbed into the body rather being, than being in the brain but they still have to peck in very short bursts because otherwise their head would heat up from all the energy that they are absorbing into their tiny little bodies Next, we have some owls. This is a barn owl. This is a snowy owl, I'm sure you recognize he Hedwig. And this is a Eurasian eagle owl. Now, a person who owns owls and had what, a falconry person once told me that uh, an interesting thing about owls is you can tell when, when they hunt from the color of their eyes. So if their eyes are black or brown, they hunt at night. They're nocturnal, that's where they're most active. If their eyes are yellow, then they hunt during the daytime. If their eyes are orange, then they are crepuscular, which means they hunt at dawn and dusk. 
Now, I've since found out that this isn't true for all owls, which is very disappointing. Uh, but it is kind of for these three, although the eagle owl is more of a daytime hunter. They're more diurnal. But another interesting thing about owls is uh, owls are often associated with wisdom. You have Athena and her owl. But actually, um, owls have very small brains. They have, they have teeny tiny brains because they have these gigantic eyes and they have all of the systems for their great ears and they don't have any room in their skull for brains. So they rely on their skill and it is a lot of skill and the, the, the things they were born with, they, they, they don't need that much of a mind, you know? Odin actually had the better idea with his ravens. Here we have the common swift and now we get on to the record breakers. The common swift can fly for 10 months without ever landing. No way. Yes way. They eat on the air, for they, are, they catch flying insects. They drink on the air by swooping down above lakes and just brushing their chest into the water and then they drink from their feathers on their chest. They fuck in the air. <laughs> and it is theorized because they must sleep that they must sleep in the air. When some Swifts were recorded and they had recording devices on, it was seen that twice a day on the clock, at dawn and dusk, they would rise to like 10,000 feet in the air and then descend slowly over half an hour. And it is presumed that by going into a slow glide, they can then have a 30 minute power nap. And that's all the sleep that they need for the day twice a day. Isn't that amazing? amazing. Also, they look very much like swallows, but they're actually in the family Apodiformes, which means legless, because people thought they didn't have any legs because they'd never seen them land. Uh, that's Greek. Uh, they act, that's actually the same family as hummingbirds. They're amazing flyers. Like hummingbirds, they can rotate their wings completely while staying stiff, which means that they can get power on both the upstroke and the downstroke, unlike most birds which have to fold it on the downstroke. And here we have another record winner, the Arctic Tern. And you may have heard about its amazing migration. These birds um, breed in the Arctic and they will have a nest there and lay eggs. And then within three months, the baby Arctic Tern will undertake a migration all the way from the Arctic to the other pole, to the Antarctic. They stay in the summer all the time. They see the most light out of any animal on Earth because they chase the sun back and forth. And you would think that living hard, they would have, how would, they would have short lives. But like the swifts, these are actually both long-lived birds. They live from 20 to 30 years. And they will do this. It's amazing. Also, they are very fierce. They will fight polar bears. They are this big. <laughs> but they are so aggressively defend their nest. They will fight humans, they'll fight foxes. They will swoop at polar bears, and polar bears are scared off by this bird. They swoop at humans too. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I speak with experience. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. And now here, we get on to the exotic birds. This is the huatzin, or the stink bird, native to South, South America. And they're called the stink bird because they smell, and this is because they are one of the only birds that can digest food like a ruminant, like a cow. So they can eat almost entirely leaves, unlike many birds, which are frugivores or insects or predators. Um, but then they smell like cows. They are also very interesting in that the young have two claws on their wings. And the reason they have this is that um, they nest over water all the time. They'll build a nest on a branch over water. And if something like a snake or some other predator will come up to try and eat the babies, the chicks will drop into the water below. And this will confuse the predator and the predator will leave because they're gone. And then the chicks will be able to use their little claws to climb back up the branch back into the nest. Here we have the cassowary, a legendary bird among the natives. Now this is Australian. There's three types of cassowary. This is the biggest one, the southern cassowary. They are the second heaviest and third tallest bird after the ostrich, part of the same family, and after the emu for tallness. Um, they live inside the forest. They're very shy. 
Uh, no one knows what that thing on top of the head does. It's being discussed. Um, but they are known to be vicious if provoked. In the World War II, American and Australian soldiers were told not to go near these birds. Don't provoke them. They have three toes, and on their middle toe, they have a long, straight, sharp nail that has been written about by birders as being able to eviscerate a man or cut off an arm easily, which is some exaggeration. Thankfully, in 150 actually recorded cases of cassoulets having attacked humans, um, until recently, only one had died. And this story is amazingly funny. So, Philip, Philip McLean, 16, and his younger brother, 13, in Australia, noticed a cassowary on their property. And they decided that they were going to go and beat it to death with sticks, because that sounded like a fun idea. So they got into a fight with the cassowary. Keeping in mind the cassowary is like six feet tall. Um, the younger boy got kicked, fell over, ran away. The older boy continued beating up the cassowary. The cassowary, however, was aware of its environment because the cassowary is a ninja and you're always aware of the environment. The older boy tripped and fell and the cassowary immediately kicked him in the neck and he bled to death before any help could arrive. <laughs> now I say until recently that was the only one because this talk is not about justice, it is about the fact that nature is beautiful and terrifying. And this year, I was excited to learn that another person had died from a cassowary attack. <laughs> this time in Florida, a man, a 70-year-old man who had raised this cassowary from birth, one day tripped over and the cassowary kicked him and he died. <laughs> <laughs> also, you remember the fact about how 90%, 7% of birds don't have penises? Both sexes of the cassowary have a penis, so they can quite literally fuck you. Do not fuck with them. <laughs> As a palate cleanser, we have the majestic lama gear, which means lamb-eating vulture or the ossifrage, bone breaker, or in English, the bearded vulture, because we're boring and we named the bird after this little moustache here, instead of after the fact that they literally only eat bones. Unlike many vultures, and this is also why they don't have a bald head, because they eschew gore and blood and flesh. Instead, they focus almost entirely on bones. 90% of their diet is bones, bone marrow. And since not many other things can take advantage of this, this works out very well for them. They have stomach acid that is some of the lowest of any animal. It's near one in pH, um, very acidic stomach acid. So they can dissolve a bone in 24 hours. They have a nine foot wingspan. Uh, they can come up to 10-ish pounds and they can carry bones to drop them to break them so they can get the marrow in, in beneath up to 8.8 .8 pounds. So almost as big as they are, they can hold bones that are this thick. They are seriously metal. Also, they literally cover themselves in metal. They are one of the few animals that uses cosmetics. You see this rust red colour? Uh, those feathers are actually white they have rolled around in dirt containing iron oxide or rust. They literally cover themselves in rust to look cooler. <laughs> the collective nouns bonus round. <laughs> so do you know what a collective noun is? Yeah. Yeah. It's a name for a group of things. So like a group of bird. So we can go through the animals that we've done today. And ducks, they can be a twack of ducks, which is very good. Or also a badling or a paddling. Badling if they're online and on land. And paddling if they're in the water. That's nice, isn't it? For chickens, you've got a brood or a cluck, cluck of chickens. For woodpeckers, they've got loads of interesting ones. You can have a descent of woodpeckers, a gatling of woodpeckers, or my favorite, a whirligast of woodpeckers. I love the animal. 
the ones that have the same letter at the start, because I can't remember the word right now. <laughs> yes, alliterative. I love the alliterative ones. You have a parliament of owls. Keeping in mind, again, small brains. <laughs> 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 and then a lot of the more exotic ones don't have any proper names, it's just flock, they're boring, um, because this is mainly from hunting in England. But vultures, you can have a wake of vultures, I like those, a wake of vultures. You could also have a tiding of magpies, I love that one. You've heard of a murder of crows, obviously, there's also an unkindness of ravens, or a pitying of doves. Oh, that was interesting. Some of my favourites, you've got some more onomatopoeic ones. You've got gaggle of geese, obviously. Flamboyance of flamingos. Oh. <laughs> Opulence of peacocks. Oh. Exaltation of larks. Aren't they nice? Lovely. My favourite one is a chime of goldfinches, because they have such a lovely song. Lovely. And this has been Interesting Bird Facts. Thank you.